Gooey, creamy, delicious craft. Blonde Mini. You know you love it. Blonde Mini. Blonde Mini, Blonde Mini time today. We're talking about the new Blonde $29 IAM, the noodle or the macaroni as some of you might like to call it. Blonde Mini. So how do these sound? Do these compete with other $29 IEMs, namely the direct competitor, Blonde BO03, the legend here that you can find for $29 a lot of the times, by the way, if you didn't know that, don't buy it at 40, you can find these for $29. So how do these sound and how do these two compare? In this video, that's what we're gonna find out after the unboxing. So welcome to the unboxing for Blonde Mini. This is the box for it, as you can see here. It says uh, WGC Blonde at the top with uh, the picture of the IEM and the wire. Mini at the bottom here in the back, you get more information on the IEM. And I don't have the IEM sitting inside the box right now because it does come loose. The IEMs are right here. But if you open the box, you slide them up like that. The IEMs will sit right here like so and the accessories will be in the accessory box right here. So here are the IEMs themselves up close. They do have this kind of weird noodle shape to them, as you can see here. And for me, with the awkward shape, they do fit quite oddly. It's not the most perfect fit. You don't get the best seal with these, at least for my ears anyway. Of course, with you guys might be different, but for my ears, I didn't really get the best seal out of these ones. So I always find a shape to be slightly bit awkward. So for the wires themselves, it's actually okay. I don't mind it. The only thing I don't like is that it does tangle up very easily and it has a bit of memory. So it does keep its shape sometime, which can be annoying at times, but hey, it's $29. I don't really expect top tier cable to come with it. So there you go. Hey friends, Tim, welcome back to another Giz Audio video. And today, of course, Blonde Mini, so let's talk about it. This thing is $29, and when an IEM is $29, I'm really searching for two things. One, do I like the sound for myself? Is it enjoyable overall? I'm really not looking for like massive detail, any technical performance, anything like that. I'm looking mainly if I enjoy the sound signature. And number two, is there any glaring flaws or any big flaws that might be a deal breaker for these IEMs. So we're gonna touch on both of those answers here soon. Let's start off with the bass. So the bass on these IEMs, they're big, they're forward. It's a V-shaped IEM through and through. You get a lot of bass, you get a lot of trouble, and in the bass, it's strong, it's punchy, it's forward, and sometimes a little too forward. So it comes across a little bit bloated on some songs. You can feel a little bit of bloatiness or crackling in some ways that it's just not pleasant, but very rarely, I would say one out of every 10 songs would have that, mainly songs that has a lot of heavy, heavy, heavy mid bass. You might get that more than on songs without super heavy emphasis on the mid bass. Sub bass is there. You can feel a little bit of like a rumbling massage with these IMs, but not too much. It's definitely not the highlight, which is kind of a shame because I kind of wish this had like a lot more sub bass, you know, to go alongside that kind of big mid bass to really like sell this whole IEM as like a bass head IEM. I wish it had that, but you know, at $29, I really can't complain too much. You still feel the sub bass is still there. I just wish it has a little bit more. Bass texture is meh at best. A lot of things kind of feel like they're smearing into each other in a way, but that's what you kind of expect at this price. So I won't knock that too much. There is a bit of smearing in the bass and the mids. So you're not getting the most well-controlled bass here. Sometimes it covers up the mids in ways that makes the mids feel so slightly bit less clear, less well-defined. So yes, there is that bit of smearing there. Not too much, but it's there. Now on to the mid-range. I like it for the most part with a few things that I don't like. Male vocals and any instrument that plays in the lower regions of the mids. With the bass being not so well-controlled and a little bit of bloatiness, it makes male vocals and cellos just feel too warm or too bassy too much and it makes male vocals sound kind of unnatural. Frank Sinatra, he already has a deep voice but with the extra bassiness, it just makes him feel too much. And male vocals like Bruno Mars or Ed Sheeran that really has a more higher voice, live in the higher frequency range if you will, they feel just 
unnaturally bassy in a way or unnaturally warm, unnaturally heavy. So they don't feel the most natural off of these. So with male vocals, it's not my favorite to listen on these IEMs. Female vocals, however, are fantastic. I really enjoy the female vocals off of this. It has just enough of a bassiness to the voice to make females feel full and meaty, while the treble extension, which we'll talk about later, is very just airy and fun and it fully represents the full range of a female vocal so female vocals off of this sounds really good so if you listen to a lot of like korean pop k-pop anime ost or just generally anything with female vocals these sound great now on to the treble now this is almost a near near perfect treble with one caveat one big caveat only uh, and that is, it has peaks. It has sibilance issues, it has peaks. So if you are sensitive to treble, these might be annoying to listen to. Now it doesn't happen to all tracks. It happens to about 30 to 40% of my tracks. So unfortunate for me that I'm treble sensitive and these do sound annoying at times. Other than that, if you're not sensitive to treble, this thing has great extension. There's a lot of air and everything just feels like there's room to breathe. Female vocals, uh, woodwind instruments, they just sound really good off of these. Detail-wise, crispiness-wise, of course, for $29, again, you don't expect the level of detail there. And this definitely doesn't have that. It will sound slightly bit more crispy because of how much the treble is, but at the end of the day, it's not the cleanest sounding uh, treble. And for the mid range as well, not the most clarity, but again, 29 bucks. Now on to imaging soundstage. Imaging is good. You can tell which direction each instruments are coming from, but you can't really tell which instrument is to the left or right of each other. It's not that clear. It's not that vivid. You can just tell that, okay, these group of instruments came from this way and these groups of instruments came from this way. And that's about the extent of what you can tell imaging wise. Soundstage wise, it lives in your head. Now these will fool you into thinking that it has a wider soundstage it does not. It just simply has really good treble extension so that the airiness, it makes you feel like you're listening to a wider soundstage, but in general, it just lives in your head. It has an average soundstage. So alternative comparison, we have the Blonde Mini and the Blonde BL03 right here. And I have to say, it is, it's sad for me to say this because this is so good. This for $29 is great. If you love V-shape and you're not sensitive to treble, these are great. I just enjoy it through and through. Every time I listen to music on songs that don't have any peaks or siblings for me, I've enjoyed it. I have no problem with this. So if you love V-Shape and you're not treble sensitive, you go with this one. But, but for the same price of $29, these are just better in almost every way. The bass, although not as strong, is way more well controlled. It's nicer, there's more texture, not too much more texture, but you can feel like it just has more detail, more layer to it than the Blonde Mini. The mid-range on this comes out slightly a bit warm, but so nice. Male vocals, instrument sounds more correct on these than on the Blonde Mini. The treble, although not as uh, high in extension, I think this is where the Blonde Mini wins in the treble, but it doesn't have any peaks. No sibilance, no peaks, no fatiguings. So that's a trade-off there. And for $29, if you can catch the Blonde 03 on sale, and they will be on sale on one of the websites. So if you check your website that you buy from and it's $40, chances are other websites have it on sale for $29. So never pay $40 bucks for this, pay the $29. And for that price, man, it is a stunner. It is a legend for a reason. And through and through, I enjoy listening to these more than these. But are these bad now? No, they're not bad. They're different signatures as well. These are V-shape, this is warm neutral. So if you like V-shape, of course you go for this one, given that you're not sensitive to sibilance. And these, if you just want an overall better IEMs with better detail, more controlled, and just overall better mid-range and no fatigues, no siblings. All right, guys, that's it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. If you tried any of these IEMs before, leave a comment down below. Tell me which one you like more and if you agree with my review or not. And with that being said, next week, we have Tanya. And after that, we have the new K-Bear. It's a K-Bear Neon. Yeah, the K-Bear Neon. I'm excited to try this one. I'm excited to try a Tanya. I just got these today, so 
unfortunately can't compare it with these ones because I haven't had the proper time to test them. But yes, next week is the Tanya from Tan's Gym. And after that is the K-Bear Neon. So subscribe, stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye.